I was saying this at a gig. I was really drunk, which is a rare one at a show. Was oh, this recent one? Yeah, and I was on stage and I was just saying that you know like we're not musicians aren't important people anymore. Mm. Like we used to be. Yeah. Um. So hi Tejas. Hey hi. Thank you. For I'm going me. to be awkward on camera for a bit. Me also. Please geek fruit and all. No no. I mean, you have it's a different thing uh, knowing that you're awkward and embracing it and making it a part of your conversation. Absolutely, I feel you. And just being awkward and be like, oh, I can't speak because I'm awkward. You can speak when you're awkward. It's just uh, you. We're doing it right now. Things. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming. Jokes Thank you so for far. calling me. Um, so, I, like I was telling you, do you want more? I'm just trying to explore and kind of um, have more people also, even if it's like fucking twenty more people who kind of just figure out like, oh shit, this cool shit is happening because. Uh, I didn't know people like you and Priyanka were around doing things when I was younger, at least. Okay. And uh, when I came across, Make I don't know it, if we were around when you were younger. We were also younger. We're not that old. When I came across Make It Happen, uh, I really dug it. Um, I don't remember when I came across that, so I can't really get into that. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was like you know the albums I really dug from. Uh, international pop music like you know John Mayer Ed Sheeran yeah. uh sometimes you know like Nora Jones and like that early 2000s yep you know feel good it's my sweet spot yeah 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 so i got that vibe thank you okay and, thanks a lot and yeah. it was dope that it was from an indian artist thank you so much when you wrote the album yeah how long was the process like i want to say where you were as an artist and as a person both A lot of where 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 I am as a person and where my Reflects, music is yeah, is the same. Yeah. I feel you. I, I'm similar that way. Exactly so, yeah. right. Like I mean, because it's not it's it isn't a band. It isn't like a bunch of people. Of course, it's like a lot of my good friends coming together to kind of arrange the music and help me kind yeah. of secure that vision. But like, it's your vision. Best. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's essentially me. It's it's very reflective of who Absolutely. I am. In fact, and this is obviously much more recently, but I've literally started another band to not. have my like to to make music for the first yeah. time to make music with other people rather than what how i naturally communicate being music and okay. just so what I, where for I'm, you it's like yeah. an expression of wherever you were in your life more than i was here and yeah. i wanted to do this artistically it's just i was here and that's the music exactly yeah. i and i think that that's that's about yeah that I, i i described this to somebody else also saying that this is like a good kind of Uh, this album kind of documents a lot of my twenties, you know, like in a good way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was some cool magazine that wrote about this. It was a cool magazine. Yeah. I forgot <laughs> which one. Was, yeah. uh, I think Dave Brito wrote that, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I, 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 I definitely uh, feel like you know everything that I was experiencing from like the time I was twenty five, you know, till to now. I mean. I'm I'm going to be 30 like next year so I feel like it's covered a lot of ground mm. uh, in things and I think the other the most important thing about this or at least about the way I write is this like you know in the beginning I feel like I was um I I do get that uh, thing a lot where people say oh you know you're like so and so artist mm. you're like an edge sheeran mm. or you like you know yeah, so those, you know you like you uh, write love songs things. but actually it's not really at all like that. I mean if anybody is actually given the the this new album uh, a listen you you'll see that there's like not yeah, really there's a lot happening there's a lot happening it's not really about love at all there's a lot of stuff like there's a lot a lot of personal things that yeah. a lot of it is about my mom and my dad i've had a pretty interesting childhood so a lot of that came into it because mm-hmm. i've been trying to become an adult and stop blaming my parents for for a lot of the problems that i have um but yeah so so a lot of it is is pretty serious but at the same time it's very fun i wanted it to be inspiring so i think that's also a yeah. big element of it like i wanted to i mean the album is called make it happen i wanted to kind of tell people that i have you know a very difficult time being in this professional as we all do but we're still trying to do it make you know it we're still trying to do it because i think it means something much larger than this month i can't pay rent or you know i can't buy this thing or that yeah. thing or whatever so so yeah i mean it's not all bad i mean we 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 put out a bad kind of rap saying that oh it's very difficult it is really difficult let's not let's not make but too we're still doing it cuz it's worth it in it. some way it's definitely worth it there is money and it's not like it's not like a ton of money but it's enough to kind of get by and make the next thing and make the next thing and if you are trying to be creative then i think that's as basically where you're going to be for some time before yeah. something happens we don't know yet because we haven't reached there uh but yeah so yeah. i think that's where i am that's how the album kind of happened right. um yeah in terms of emotionally speaking uh, 
before i move to the next question i just want to say like these are like some of the reasons why i really fuck with your music heavy because mm-hmm. it feels like it comes from a genuine place you weren't trying to make a love song you weren't trying to make a song about religion like you told me there yeah. is one on it it's not like you were trying to say it's it's like you were saying what you felt about it and why it affected you in some way and i think yeah. we need more of those personal individual stances because we all we, we're, we're going to realize we all connect with each other's stances in some way yeah i think because we're all kind of in the zeitgeist of things we're all kind of going through the same issues uh the other thing is that this album was so different from my first record so so that was a huge kind of difference in my small victories yeah so small victories yeah. the first album came out obviously that was i still had a job while i was doing that i just said like oh when i grow up i want to have an album at least by the time i was 25 i just barely made it and like you know uh, when i was 25 i released that album and that was like so different it mm. was like recording i mean i had warren uh, mendonca obviously a lot of people know him as black shirt blues but he's one of the you know premier guitar players in india he's really good uh, obviously he's a genius when it comes to music and he kind of he helped all of us my whole band like pretty much uh, a lot when it came to that first record because we hadn't met before that i mean in the sense we had never jammed before that on small weeks we would never never oh, we, wow. we 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 would jam the album with uh, the boys for like 3 days uh recorded in 3 days and then like 2 months later it was out you know so, so who was, was on that first album uh it was me alok uh, uh padhe on um on keys and percussion is awesome he doesn't play with us anymore but uh, uh jj and adil who are still you know yeah. in the band jj and uh, jj plays drums adil plays bass uh and warren playing guitar you know yeah. so he played guitar on that first record and on small victory yeah and oh, nice. he and i know that yeah so he and i uh, i mean produced it To, mm. I mean, it's mostly yeah. him. He was of, involved on make it happen as well, right? He mixed the album. Yeah. All right. So and yeah, when I say mix the album, I mean that's doing it a disservice. I think like mixing is far Fine more cre- far vision. more creative process than people kind yeah. of make it out to be sometimes. I, so it's not just like leveling and stuff. It's like what do you want to stand out? What do you want to? That's why you really need to bring your vision to life. Like you have all the ingredients. Yeah. How much of each do you exactly? How much? Of, what do you want the you know ultimate flavor to be? The tadka, you know. Tadka how, vibes, bro. Yeah, how do you want? How do you want it to be? Shout out Warren for the tadka vibes. Yeah, tadka vibes. So. <laughs> <laughs> And you mentioned how uh, Warren was involved on both, and the first one yeah. was a slightly uh, more compact, easier, a much more yeah, it's much quicker process. The yeah. first one, it was very fluid, like I just went with the flow. It was almost like recording like jams and stuff. Right. And then obviously we did overdubs and we recorded the vocals. But it was chiller. It was much easier because there's not much of a production angle to it. It was mostly like. what you hear is what you get you know like guitar drums bass yeah, vocals it, that's it. that was what it was that's the process even and i'm keys. trying to adapt to yeah, for my it, next project like it, to go from just taking like a basic vision to like developing that yeah i mean there is merit to it in the sense that then you're literally relying mostly on your skill and your talent and you know not to say that production isn't that but i mean um you're just relying on the bare bones of or, and today's music is kind of move pass in many ways but like and i think because yeah the artists who invest their time in trying to do that for maybe their own situation that was the only situ- way they could do it like for me i was very concentrated on just being the best rapper i could right. i didn't have the software at home to try what auto tune would sound like on my voice but you are the best rapper so <laughs> so you won so it's But yeah. that's how I'm saying. So that situation yeah. helps you develop a skill, which then later 100%. when you add that production aspect, suddenly becomes. Dude, I completely agree in the sense that yes, you should try and you know try and add your add skills wherever you yeah. can. I mean, you I don't know if you you'll hear me say this a lot of like songwriters. A lot of people say, "Oh, what's the best advice you have for an upcoming singer songwriter?" They just and I'm just like, learn Photoshop. That's <laughs> what is really gonna help you. <laughs> in life. Yeah. Because I mean don't bother like becoming a better musician cuz that tons of though. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the hustle and everything you had to do to bring a vision to life. Yeah. With this album on make it happen it's it, it's very clear that it's a you know like really thought out and ri- well written stuff. Okay. Uh and b that you have like some insane collaborators on this on instruments or on vocal duties and Yeah. I like just trying to understand Well, what the difficulties were in this because from the outside we don't really get that like a lot of people don't get it yeah was don't. it very expensive was it a, like chaos 
what is the it, it was all of it right it, it, it was it was expensive i mean i it was well famously now people know about how we crowdfunded it you know Swag. crowdfunding was like super successful because it was done so quickly it was a lot of good will yeah. out there for the album so i think that's what kind of got more and more people interested in helping out and stuff and obviously just generally i mean a lot of them were like really good friends who yeah. obviously i wanted to work with and obviously i was very happy that they obliged but um i think the most uh, the most difficult thing is I, and I've I've written about this in an article about this latency period between the time you come up with an idea for a song and the time it's released, right? What happens really in the mind of a of a writer in that point of time? And it's like it's like it's like purgatory, you know? Like you're just in this latent kind of place, and you don't know how to expend that energy. You don't want it to. You don't want to play it too much because you don't want people to hear it just in that nat- nascent form. You want to kind of preserve it for the album. But the album's taking so much time, but you want to get it out because you want to move on as a human being. So there's a lot of stuff associated with that. So for me, I had a lot of those issues because I had some songs which I've, man, one of the songs called "You Want," uh, mm. which is on this album. We've been playing. We played it at the launch of our first album. You know, like we, what? yeah, yeah, we played that song. It was very like. And do you still play it? Yeah, it's like now it's like in its sweet spot, like because yeah. it's Cause so you played with the full band. We're so also, good man. at playing some of the like some of the songs because yeah. we're really like well set into yeah. it. I have this one song on the first album called "The Next Best Thing." It's another riff like that I've been playing for years and years. And then I was once in Dhruv Vishwanath's house in Delhi, and he was just like. And he he's such a good guitar player. He just literally picked it up like in seconds, and he was just playing. He's like, "Wow, man, this is really cool. Is it a song?" And I was just like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then I was like, "Shit, okay, cool." Then I went and I and I, I mean, I, in like a matter of like months, it kind of got done. But it's like songs. So basically, my, my point is that a lot of these songs kind of kick about in my mind for a long time. Yeah. I I say this a lot that you know it takes about a year for me to finish writing a song, start to finish. Mm. Uh, that's because I really like mulling about with it. I don't like. Um, I don't chase a song. This is a bad habit, but I don't mm. like chasing a song. Yeah. I let I like letting it you come to me naturally. Be, yeah. Like yeah. in the sense that you know, if I'll just keep playing it, if nothing's happening, I'm not gonna get frustrated by it. I'm just gonna be like, it's gonna it's gonna happen. That's so um, creatively a very different way. It's very to the time, way I look at time consuming. How no, do you do I just it? wanna no, I just wanna pick your brain. So the way I I I like to work is um, at least till now I usually I've always ended up working on projects. Like an EP or a mixtape right. or an album. Sure, or, sure. So, I'm always trying to. I'm looking at the bigger vision. And I'm like, fuck, this piece is missing. I need to get this done ASAP. Right. So, because there's been situations where I've realized that you, without realizing, a song slipped out of my process for, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, and then yeah. suddenly one day I get an idea that really works, and yeah. it's come to me when I've stopped chasing it. So I want to know it from happens, you, man. like, yeah. Is there one song on this album that was a product of that in particular that you are really like yo that one really came together like that and Falling Out which is one of my favorites mm. uh I think that's a song that um that I really just wi- wine now, wine as well you know like wine is like something if if you notice uh, this thing about wi- wine uh, you know the first verse and the second verse are two completely different melodic patterns right like the first verse is like and then the second one is just kind of it's a free form kind of thing and that's because there was such a big period of time between me writing like because i couldn't sing and play at the same time the only th- melody i could sing and play was the first verse oh. and i thought that was going to be the second verse but by the time i had learned how to play it so i could just but, sing anything over oh. it and so they're so that is so dope. different the way our situations change yeah and so i t- and it works well you know because like i got to say a lot more because the the song is essentially like um It's a song that is weirdly bringing back more and more meaning every time i kind of think about it it's weird it's like it's about it's a song about like um like knowing somebody when they were in an innocent phase of their life and mm. then you like don't meet that person for a while and then you see them like suddenly in a different setting where they're like this powerful person mm-hmm. and you don't know whether you like that person as much is, anymore is that the meaning of the fruit uh, well, so fruit on what's the line it's basically from the from all the fruit you'll make your wine but what yeah. really the the meaning of the song comes out in the second verse the most which is that all the years you spend uh turning into something um uh into what you are has given you a certain flavor that i could never really taste you know it's like mm. that's basically the point of wine being this metaphor or something that kind of ages over time yeah and some it's a it's an it's an ad- acquired taste you know it's like some people like it some people don't like it so i i really found that to oh, be that's a, crazy so i started writing it about a few people but then as most of my songs it's kind of 
it makes more sense about myself like mm. living in bombay has turned me into a much colder much more like harsher person because you know it's like the city agitates you you know and you create because of that but you also become like a, a mean kind of person i don't like i have a lot of stuff to <laughs> <laughs> off camera to play you yeah. <laughs> on wine the one uh, like for me to be very honest with you with that song as much as i try and get the lyrics each time i just kind of zone out <laughs> like yeah, it's like no like I just genuinely get lost in it yeah. and that's why I haven't got all the lyrics yet yeah. but now that you mention and explain mm-hmm. it it's mad like I one day randomly called Tejas when I was on uh, a, a rare break that I took but I I was out of town randomly called this guy and was like bro this song is fucking it's like special as fuck thank you it is really sp- i mean it's special to to me as well i mean for many reasons i mean there was this one video which we did in a car and you know that video went viral and the stuff the car jam yeah was, yeah so people know it by that and you know it's weirdly that's like it, the song doesn't have a music video but if the, anything can be as close to the thing it's that man like a lot of that's people the heard the song that way and uh, i'm not against it it was cool it's like it got like what 70000 like we- views in like the first like week and oh, man. and it was just like boom you know i was just like cool because now it's just one less song of familiarize people with but <laughs> yeah. but you know like the fact i think somebody some people see something in that song it's weird you know like when you so, i wrote it and it was not like it was yeah, not I like a super about favorite that. or anything because yeah for me as as an artist i can never listen to my music like i'm very grateful because people hit me up saying you know good stuff whatever and they say it really nice things but i can never hear it the way they are hearing it so yeah, i want to ask you to, yeah. like, to me the song sounds like i just want to explain as a listener it just sounds it sounds big and it sounds deep and it sounds like the more the song grew it became more and more like a special piece of art and not like bigger than just a track it is exactly that's so did you write it like that yeah, is my 100%. question so i you know the way i write some <laughs> stuff sometimes it's like i have the the verse the chord like the chords everything yeah. and but i still keep trying to dig more you yeah. have to dig more and find more paths Absolutely. and this album is quite an indulgent album i mean yeah. this song is the perfect example of it. it's like 7 minutes long it doesn't really need to be i mean we can chop so much of it off but i was just like i mean why it's like i like but all that's of the it. thing I, yeah. i think when you use the word indulgent um you're kind of uh, giving yourself less credit because it's not indulgent in the sense ki it's cool ki your taste and you want it 7 minutes you gave people a song they wanted for 7 minutes i'd say it's thought out maybe i mean yeah i i definitely wanted it to be for 7 minutes like i mean there is a point for me like i try and write as conceptually as I possible i just meant that it's that not just for you i think indulgent would be mm. if a, a lot of what i did in my uh, like lyrical miracle underground hip hop where it just rhymes with no meaning that someone else wouldn't give a fuck about maybe yeah you 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 absolutely yeah. right i mean i'm no, i know people can get into it but uh I mean let me put it this way I'm a big fan of my own music I I mm. I really love what I write and that's why I do it if I didn't like it I wouldn't do it So with regards to the album and uh, I mean we spoke a lot about the process and yeah. your approach and stuff I want to talk a little bit more about the content and the themes on it Yeah um you have songs which are like uh, they're technically I guess love songs or heartbreak songs or in that space but clearly their personal sto- uh, personal stories yeah i mean like they're and not that many like again they're not like really love songs in the sense i mean uh, you can listen to it's songs about love uh, about emotion they're about emotion but that not maybe love y- like you you so there's no like mm, there's once uh not really or maybe the way i hear so i mean like they're love songs in the sense like that they're uh, not in the sense they're not about a person or they don't they don't involve a romantic angle let's put it that way oh god yeah they don't yeah fair so i guess that's the way i listen to it yeah that's i mean all. but that's the vibe that he gives off so that's why yeah. i mean that's why i get that a lot that's why yeah. I, but i'm i'm not opposed to it whatever makes you happy and whatever you want, however where you want to approach the album got is it. fine that's like in the end it's not the music is not yours anymore you give it to people so what um, i wanted to kind of ask yeah, you about yeah. was um so In fact, you're probably right in the sense that they they are not ex- explicitly love songs. Maybe the way it's it's your story, which maybe pockets of it I relate to things in my life. Yeah, yeah. You But, can relate it to a love yeah, so, situation. So I suppose, I'm yeah. saying because and that happens at least with me because I hear a lot of parts where I'm being very vulnerable, mm-hmm. and there's an emotion which is very clearly a certain emotion. Right. I don't know how to explain this better. Yeah. But so I want to ask you about like. in today's time with instagram and all this stuff and we kind of have to do the hustle a bit a lot of people um 
are uncomfortable being a honest in their music and be on top of honest vulnerable and you i hear so? that a lot now you're feeling i mean maybe I like mainstream music sure. yeah i mean that's yeah, what i mean like pe- people media. who are you know quote unquote i mean not quote unquote but who are uh, in the same like playlist as you maybe in someone's phone yeah thing is that you know i feel like you know internet obviously instagram things like that has brought people closer they have to be relatable because if they're not and they're living on like this different plane of existence yeah it's not it's so, not you can't do that with with there's no mystique anymore you know what i mean like yeah. with uh, when yeah. it comes to artists uh, you you want to be able to connect to people because it's just nicer man it's yeah. just better and like i was i was just pleasantly surprised that that happened with this this said yes. person but my point is um uh, when it comes to kind of being honest in the music the music is incidental man like yeah. uh, sometimes now i know i mean i hate to sound like such a but like i was saying this at a gig i was really drunk which is a rare one at a show oh, this recent one yeah and i was on stage and i was just saying that you know like we're not musicians aren't important people anymore mm. like we used to be yeah. like you know in the before in the age of like like in the 80s 90s where yeah. where you couldn't access a musician any other way except through their music, music. that that's what i'm trying that's to say that's when we were like important because then there's that you know mm. there's that mystique there's that you know that artistry what is this who's yeah. this person there's yeah. that mystery right but like now that you know we're not that important anymore we don't have the the yeah i guess that re- that yeah, credit rating of a, of an artist what it used to be now we're like humans who make it's kind of music. getting lost in also, quote unquote content But I yeah, guess. I mean, yeah. everyone makes music yeah. now. It's like it's like how everyone's a photographer now, right? Yeah. Like everyone's a photographer. So the last um question and um like very honestly, I think if any of my listeners are watching this, they'll understand how much I'm relating to you right now. And even if they don't or they're not watching, I'm really relating to you right <laughs> now. <laughs> no, no, no. But um and the one part that I think is a common theme between my previous work uh Libra scale which yeah, is an album sure, yeah. and make it happen is that there's a lot of I like you use the word inspiring and I I do I'm not I I wouldn't want to say Libra scale was inspiring but I think there's a clear intention to kind of defeat some kind of obstacle to yeah. overcome I yeah, guess is 100%. like to fight through something that's everything though isn't it I mean like you have to have that I mean like for me it seems like I can't think of a better emotion than to go with honestly because literally every art is against us in in many ways at least it feels like that for yeah. me and you know like i know a lot of people say that i there's there's co- countless odds if yeah, not each odds yeah, yeah i mean like there's the different things you know for different people everyone's fighting something everyone has problems everybody everyone's dealing with something everyone has baggage i mean why not if you're using something as communicable as like music yeah. to kind of talk to people or say this is who i am I mean like I feel What? like I should try and say something about it and I I mean a lot of people have told me this I have this bad hero complex thing right like I, it feels like I'm always trying to be like you know oh when's your album coming out I'm, I, like I I started Kadak Apple Records with uh, with Krishna Kija for the same reason I was like oh man we got to help songwriters I don't know why I just feel like is maybe it's because it's something that I really want I really want somebody to do that for me. Yeah. And um it's not like a paid forward thing, but it's like the only thing I know how to do. It's, like it's I mean like, like a, I want to try and see like, it at least. It's like the way I see it and again uh I kind of get what you're saying. I think it's almost like activism for a cause you really believe in. Yeah. I uh, I, I mean, mean should I give you a loftier goal? If, please. Should I give this is the we shall the most, aim. We let's shall aim. aim super high. Okay? Aim. Okay, so here's what it is. Let's go. The Renaissance period. <laughs> okay? Imagine an entire era was defined by the art that came out mm. okay and that's what pushed like you know civilization forward the art that came out in that era yeah okay so whether it's like da vinci or michelangelo or or any of the the renaissance greats right like that's what kind of pushed society like, forward yeah, right? literally changed forward. the world yeah every small bit and of, we and we yeah. know about it like we still yeah. talk about it yeah. right and um i think This country is in dire need of like a lot revolution. of things. Not even revolution. I mean, yeah. I Sorry, mean, that's me. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so for me, it's like yeah. I don't know if I don't know what is going to help. But I think few things, you know, like this is really lofty. But again, like so, things like you know, I think there should be like a little more caring, a little more compassion for people. Like people kindness. don't want to. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I think uh, because a lot of people just don't like. Uh, they're very mean, man. People are mean here, and they don't. 
you heard about like quote unquote yeah, just, no it's it's the it's a problem of living in this country and we're not trying to find any solutions for it this is like a super lofty yeah. goal but i really think that if i somehow small small thing if i yeah. just push like we create more art and we create more we reach more people more people get like woke, new ideas yeah people yeah. get woke yeah. i don't know if that's i don't know if this is the way i yeah. have no answers but i i feel like my part is to kind it's of your attempt is to, to kind of way. reach more people yeah. and i have man sometimes i get people who listen to my music who can't even string proper sentences in english to mm. to tell me that this is like something that i've really yeah. you know that's really moved me or something and so maybe it's reaching people who i never thought it would like you yeah. know maybe it's reaching a lot more people who can who can who 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 should be able to like like say oh wow there is also this option it's like this weird thing you know before uh, i'm not saying kada capital did this but like maybe 4 5 years ago like i don't think people kind of thought that the singer song like this the song at a genre has kind of seen an increase now in the last 5 mm. years and uh, i don't think people knew they had the option you know like mm. oh otherwise it was like getting into metal or a band mm. or a rock thing i was like you can just write your own songs okay. and put it out it's not a it's not a terrible yeah. thing you can do that and and so a lot of i i see a lot more singer songwriters yeah. now so and it's thanks to like people whether, like patik and yeah. you know so like whether it's a 1% or a 100% contribution it's at least a contribution i mean yeah i mean that's the way i'd like to see i feel like i'm yeah. doing something sure so like i was saying i feel like your music is um, you are trying to like i said overcome something and this might be personal so you can choose not to answer it Dude, but i want to kind of i want to kind of understand the album is kind of dense it's not vanilla thank you Uh, so that's like the nicest thing. Yeah, at yeah. least I felt Dance so. Dance is great. I like it. That's how I felt. Yeah. Um uh what if you could touch upon mm-hmm. were you pushing against what what was it like for example I don't know if this is related but mm-hmm. you shifting to Bombay I don't know was family was just um, whatever you would want to tell us about. Yeah, so from, uh, no so I mean family is a like huge part of my life. I had a pretty troubled childhood like uh, my parents are separated. and um you know and we lost a lot of money towards like you know the the brief like whatever the time i was in dubai towards the end and so i mean and my brother had gone to the states and he had a really good education i mean like he he studied in like a, a really good school and everything like that but by the time it was time for me to go to school i mean it was i had two problems one is like obviously we couldn't afford it but the second thing was like, i don't know if i wanted to go to college like i, I didn't mm. know if i wanted to kind of do any just random thing because i was really kind of in a difficult place i mean I, these are just like these are just few things that have yeah. determined who i am as a yeah, person but like uh uh and nothing against my parents i mean like it's the situation i mean the, so yeah. i used to harbor a lot of like you know like anger and like i used to be resentment. like yeah resentment you know f- for my folks all like, oh, i going to do this blah blah and yeah you know whatever that's i mean unfortunately this is the case for a lot of people like mm. a lot of people have like this kind of like background and uh because of that uh i i don't regret any of it because it's shaped obviously who i am mm. but the other thing is that i also kind of learned i was like how much also now to kind of keep like harking back to your childhood obviously that is kind of shaped me i mean i've anxiety problems and stuff like that so that's yeah. kind of shaped me again yeah. but a lot of things is like, i and my parents weren't the happiest when i got into music but now they're cool with it they're just mm. like okay cool so all the whatever i've like you know gone through i've had excellent times in my life right like i grew up in a in a really like fun place dubai i had some of the best like friends ever who have supported everything till date you know like i have some of the, like the the best friends from school shout out yeah shout out just the best ever um uh you know so i i've had a lot of and i have had I have my family back home in pune like my cousins who kind of said remember i said oh i, I don't know if i want to go to college they were like shut the fuck up you're going to go <laughs> for make it happen like i got to kind of you know you know like just put out some more feelers and just really think about what i was feeling as a as an adult yeah man living in bombay because i still feel like a boy i still feel like a yeah. kid a lot uh, yeah. i do fun stupid kid things yeah. uh, i talk about comic books like literally for a living <laughs> uh, in in many ways um so I, i i still wanted to kind of think about a lot of things that i haven't really kind of come to terms with yeah. so a lot yeah. of it was to do with my parents like there's a song called kindness yeah. uh which is like this really angsty song about you know religion and uh, how my mother is kind of like i feel like my parents are like pseudo religious yeah. um sometimes you know like throughout my youth i don't know if it was a big kind of indoctrination or anything that happened but it also felt like oh okay cool because this is how we are we got to do it so we did it so i'm not at all religious yeah. um so but my mother and i 
argue about it a lot. Yeah. So that's kind of what the song became. Um, another song called "Slow Me Down," which is about my father, who I've had like a very tense relationship in um, earlier. Now we're cool and it's great, but you know, we were. Uh, I hadn't seen him in in like seven years, uh, because he was still in Dubai, and I met him for the first time at my brother's wedding. And you know, so it was like it, I, I always felt like he didn't know what was happening in my life, and we struggled to have conversations before that. Uh, but you know, he was hospitalized because he had like some gastroenteritis, and it was like I was I did the sound check, and then I got this call, and so I had to leave and go and see him. And he was in the ICU, and I was just like, dude, what's wrong with you? And my dad is like a classic workaholic, you know, like mm. work, work, work. I'm I'm gonna work till I die, you know, like mm. literally. That's yeah. that's my dad, mm. and um, and so I was. Uh, and i was writing the song called slow me down already which was about my own life and i was like dude i need to i'm in my 20s i want to also have fun and i was having fun i i yeah. have a ton of fun as i'm not saying i don't i have a really good time but like i also wanted like i was going nuts with the advertising when i came here to work and like i wanted to chill out a yeah. bit and just like enjoy yeah, my life you, just you know just breathe for a second exactly so yeah. i was writing this song called slow me down and then this happened to my dad and now i realized oh shit maybe i'm writing this about my father and so mm. it kind of became this song about me and my dad mm. and uh, yeah and that's like one of the really dark emotional kind of places in the yeah. album so so yeah i think uh, if you know if i didn't have the time to think about it or if i didn't have the time to really like focus in on on what are the things that really drive me as a human being i wouldn't have reached those places um that's yeah. kind of i'm glad I'm very glad that they've made it into the album. So, Can yeah. I ask you a couple of uh, very simple Go for it. pointy questions? Oh, lightning round. Yeah. Flash questions. No. Don't you can choose not to answer cuz I might have not answered a couple of these. No, man. The favorite feature on the album. Feature, like as in guest. Favorite guest. Oh, oh, so tough. See, I'm telling you. So there are three uh I'd say stand out features in the album. Yeah. Uh, well, four technically. Yeah. So there's one song which I wrote with Heather. So it's not really a feature. Yeah. We co-wrote that song together. Okay. That's the quickest I've ever written a song. We wrote it in Gostana, 30 okay. minutes, boom, it was okay. done. And it was written years and years ago. And I was like, why is this not out? So that song, that song, is about my relationship with Heather. I feel oh, okay. like I feel this is what I All think right. it's about. It's like it's about like, it's about a friendship that. can stand the test of time. I mean she's one of my favorite people ever. She's so nice. It's yeah. weird like it's it, she I don't meet you don't meet people like her. She's just too nice. So um uh and she's just she's like a wonderful like a good person. Yeah. Super rare. Yeah. Especially once you live in Bombay. Like I feel like I used to be a good person. Man. I used to be nice. And now that's all gone to shit anyway, <laughs> but um, the other ones is Reese who plays a solo i mean we have a big horn section which has Ryan Sadri yeah. Johan and all these guys on on um mm. on Mira Fernandez or uh, um and Ramon yeah from okay. Fabulous yeah. but Reese is the one who plays a solo yeah. in Wine, Wine. which is kind of like a jazzy sco- solo and anyway, there's a great story about this at least i think it's a great story Done. we were taking we were doing the takes we were final takes for the solo in the studio and i i didn't rehearse anything with him i was just like we're going to do this so he did a couple of takes which were really fucking good like mm. amazingly good but it was slightly jazz heavy and i was like keep it still in the r&bish kind of space and uh so i was like reese okay once and on the talk back i was just like listen dude this, will it help if i just tell you what the song is about and then you can go for it and he's just like uh, yeah sure of course and he's always ready to hear and yeah. be part of the emotion and you know so some people just don't give a fuck you know yeah. like they don't care um so i was like okay the song is about you know these people and you know how people change over time and you know it kind of matures and and i just informed him Yo, with what the song is about and i was just like now go and whatever he took next was what was on the, the album final yeah that's on the Shit. album that's one of my favorite parts of the album yeah, like just that whole out that whole the, uh, yeah. yeah and the, i'd say the third feature is warren who plays a guitar solo on i can be the night and i gave him this brief oh, that was him yeah of course oh. it is him of yeah. course it's unmistakable yeah. right so i i told him literally i told him one sentence i was like uh, i want this guitar solo to be my beat it from by Michael Jackson you know so Eddie Van Halen plays the solo i mean like I famously this. this is yeah. what it's so if you hear that solo it's an iconic guitar solo okay. i was like i want my michael jackson's beat it solo so he went hard song. so i was, and he was just like cool and he did and he did the take i wasn't even there for it and he made me and i when i when i heard it i was just like cool set <laughs> and, and i've got, tried to learn it now for these shows yeah. which was a bad idea to give war in the thing for me to learn from anyway and the fourth thing i'd say this is almost like an like a ghost kind of feature which is kind of what it sounds like well. well yeah oh actually i didn't think about that yeah oh, luke is yeah, on the album yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, uh mali who is on oh. the song called falling out 
Yeah. Um, this is also a nice one where she uh, for that song we um, did this one thing where I was I I wrote the entire thing I I wrote wrote on the guitar but I programmed the entire thing onto my iPad and then one mm. day I was like the song is missing something it needs to have like this wistful airy kind of female vocal kind mm. of floating around because the whole song is is set in space and that's what I, I really wanted to sound like sonically and so I was like Mali this is the key uh, and I sang it to her. I was like sing whatever you want. She had no reference. She couldn't hear anything. So she just sang like a melody, and I just like chopped a little bit of it, and that's the. So you recorded that on the iPad. On the iPad. Uh, you also have two secret features which maybe we shouldn't talk about. I busted your cat wala scene. Correct. But there's one more, no? Which is what? The voice note. Oh right, of course. My mother is on this album. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's on kindness, the song yeah. which I spoke about yeah. about religion and everything. I kind of duped her into, and I made you her made her. Learned, her hustled and dude, I made her listen to it. She couldn't recognize it also, man. Even I actually, to be honest. Yeah, like, you, you can't really uh, tell in that moment, yeah. but it's just like it's there. But all right, uh, since we're running out of battery. Sure, yeah, yeah. This is a great way to. This is the that, format of the show. This is how I'm going to segue it by just being real and awkward. Cool, cool. No, no, it's good. Uh, <laughs> thanks, man. Jokes apart, uh, this has been great. Dude, you know I'm your big fan, right? Like I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a huge fan of your music. And, Thank you, bro. And, and that's how we became friends. Not the other. We didn't become friends, and I was just like, some people you make friends and be like, yeah. ha, okay, you music will be better. Yeah, we'll do something. Ha, 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 ha uh make it happen go stream it uh do you want to plug something something i have coming on halloween or something uh, that's what i was thinking of. yeah i don't know when this uh, video is going to come out uh, before halloween i think but i mean yeah so this we have a big halloween party just follow my page on instagram and you'll find out all about it but otherwise uh, check out uh, make it happen the yeah. album uh, and check out karak apple artists yeah karak uh, apple Mali, records yes. arifa um rano bone bro uh short round uh, fat yellow moon and shara toy catch <laughs> toy catch uh, yeah, really all great that. artists <laughs> all right yeah. thank you man cool. and cheers thank you so much